We did get a bunch of new supporters. We did. So thank you guys for that. Yeah. Um, so let's give a special shout out to our new supporters this week. Well, welcome to Megan and Joanne, new uh, new new tacos. What this, up? This past week. Um, so thank you guys so much for supporting us. Joanne, I know, is also from um from the Boston area. So fellow mass hole. Yeah. Hey, hey. Welcome, Megan and Joanne. <laughs> I stole your joke. <laughs> it- <laughs> It wasn't even my joke. It was in the movie, The House Bunny. <laughs> but yes, I was like, whenever I think of the name Joanne, I always think of The House Bunny. Jo- if you have not joined our Patreon, make sure you do, because not only do you get pretty much unlimited access to uh, our episodes, you get them ad-free, you get access to our Discord, which has a lot of great conversation going on there, and you get a bunch of different prizes depending on what level you choose. So we have three different tiers. We have our uh, our, our small taco, um, which you get a shout out on the show. You get, like I said, access to all those episodes ad free. So then we have our taco nacho tier, um, which you get a shout out on the show, access to all of our episodes ad free discord, a nice handwritten note from us, get some taco talk murder to me stickers and a uh, trading card. And then also for our taco supremos, you get all of our ad free episodes, access to the discord. You get a special taco supremo episode every single week. You get true crime comic quick, whatever, you know, feature we have going on right now. Now you get a uh, um you get your stickers, handwritten note, shout out on the show, surprise shot. Um, and also you could if you join for the whole year, you can do um either ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars per year. If you do a hundred dollars per year, you also get an additional um, you know, Charles Manson, I think we have right now, comic book, and a signed picture of Lieutenant Joe Kenda um from the TV show. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on, and you get to talk to us. Um, so yeah, so join on our Patreon. We'd love to have you. Nice job, Jen. Yay. Thanks, guys. Good job. Sorry. I'm proud of you. All right. I didn't even look at my paper because I was thinking, oh, no, I have to pitch this and I don't have my paper. It might be easier to remember just as a suggestion when you do the start with the tears and you you say like the nacho you get, you can just say all that plus that we don't have to like remember all of them all over again. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That might help. That's true. But there you go. You did great. You did all. Awesome. Much better than last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Much you better, got it. which was much better than the week before. See, everyone's like, hell yeah, Jen, nailed it. Whose surprise shot are we doing today? Today we're doing one for Christy. Um, so I picked this out. I kind of made it, and we'll probably may want to drink it a little bit later. Um, this is like a more of a shooter, yeah, I take it. Yes. So this is for Christy. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Christy. Oh, it's Christy. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Oh, it's like Spritey tasting or something. It does taste like like, Sprite. It's like lemon or something. So it's uh, Tobo Chico, vodka, and margarita mix. This episode is actually pretty crazy. It's it's a little different, but I think you guys will like it. I don't know if anyone else has covered it. I I would say they probably may have. Anyway, this is a request. And I want to say to get your requests done, the best way to do it is to put it on the Discord in the thread. I'm telling you, because that's where I go and look the first thing for requests. And I always try to, like when I do requests, like I'll do a story and then... And like I'll research half of it and then kind of lose interest and then I'll just kind of push it off. So I got to be interested in it at the time. It's kind of crazy. I know. So and just keep adding stuff into the discord. I'm telling you, that's the best way to get me to do a story. Just I, constant peppering. <laughs> hey, yes. Hey, done. Done. <laughs> so are you guys ready to get started? I am. Mm-hmm. All righty then. We're actually going to Halloween day. Oh, and spooky. so this story and we're on the Google Earth. We are going to Japan and this is for Nanami. This is her request. Brand new Supremo. She just put it in. I found it really interesting. So I was like, I got to oh, do we this. Done the sake. Oh, we'll go get it. Well, we can do it when we do her, her dedication. All right. How's that? So this is actually where we're going. And she posted also in the discord that and I'll show you the picture here in a second. She actually went to look at this place like last week. And this is an apartment building here in Japan. This is actually right by the uh there's a military base here called Camp Zama. Where is it at? And that's where all the Japanese military train somewhere around here. Oh, there it says Zama in the middle. Yeah, Camp Z- Camp Zama. But there's a whole base over here. Well, no, it says Zama in the middle. No, oh, there's yeah, a, back. I think that's the base. I don't know. Yeah, because there's a gate one. Anyway, I want to say when we sent your package out today, Nanami, the first time ever I had to write in Japanese, like the symbols. Very so they're cool. probably going to be like, what I the hope fu-? you got it right. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, if like I feel like, it, and I could be wrong. I mean, I probably am wrong. If you like, if one stroke could go instead of going ninety degrees, it might go like ten degrees, and it's a different letter. Yeah, we. Well, you know what I mean. Hopefully, I feel like it makes it to you. We'll see. It might take a while, but yeah. Anyway, this is what she took off her cell phone of the apartment that we're going to tonight. Oh wow! So she took this like last week. Wow. This is the apartment. I will say the apartment's still there, and it is the cheapest apartment to rent right now. I bet it is. Especially room 205. Oh. <laughs> do not go. Do not go. All right. Today, we're going to Halloween Day 2017. Mm. Are you guys ready to get started? Are we getting started now? Yeah, yeah. we're getting started. Right, we're getting we're started. doing this. Are we doing this? Mm-hmm. We're doing this. All right. Can you describe this woman for us? Japanese. Oh, thank you, Jen. There you go. Um, and that was it. Yeah, Japanese. <laughs> is she like maybe 10 ish years old? She looks very young in that photo. I would say maybe like 14. No. Really? Okay. I obviously don't know when this photo is dated, but it seems like it's recent. And she was 23 when she died. I know, right? No. I know, man. I don't know. Maybe it is super young, but I can't imagine her not having an updated picture since she was 14 and she's 23. Like, this is the photo that. Uh, yeah. It's got to be an old photo. It has to be. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would they use a 14-year-old photo? I I literally think she just looks that young. I can't read Japanese. I don't know when this photo was taken. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that says. All right. Anyway, tonight we're going to Halloween Day 2017. A 23-year-old woman. Her name is Aiko Tomora. That sounded kind of good. did. Yeah. Proud of you. Good job. I'm starting this story on Halloween Day, but she goes missing a few days prior, uh, almost a week prior, and her brother gets really real worried. You know, where is my sister? This is not like her. A little bit about her background real quick. The mother died a few months ago before this in 2017, and she has not been taking it very well. From what I've seen, she's a, she was a very sweet girl, but she just could not take her mother's death well at all. So now the brother is super worried. And I want to say before we go any further, Twitter over there is more popular than any other social media app. So the first thing the brother does is go on Twitter into her sister's profile. Eventually, he figures out the password. So she posted this following message on her Twitter right before she goes missing. The 23-year-old female wrote on Twitter, I want to die, but doing so alone is terrible. I'm looking for someone to die with me. All right, what do you think about that? Wow. That's really sad and dark. No one wants to die alone, but I mean, that's usually how most people die. Unless it's like a murder-suicide thing. But even then... Somebody's got to go first. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Took a turn. <laughs> All right. Hey, Joanne. Welcome to the live. What's oh, what Joanne? Up? What's up, Joanne? <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, you own that store called Joanne's, right? Isn't Fabrics. that like a Hobby, hobby Lobby? Fabric <laughs> store. All right. Joanne, how long have you been? Are you a, a lifelong mass hole? What'd you just say? Mass hole. You heard She's me. She's from Massachusetts. We're allowed to say that. If I was from New York, I wouldn't be allowed to say that. Brandon, are you a lifelong redneck because you're from the South? And do you have sex with your cousins like me? No, I don't. I shouldn't say that because like my cousins could be listening. Yeah. Okay. That's shit. I See, I can cut whatever I want from good, myself. Good for you. All it's right. on YouTube forever. So the <laughs> the brother looks at her Twitter and finds through her private messages that she recently did find someone who wants to die with her. Suicide. Oh, can't say that. Unalive. She did find someone who wanted to commit suicide with her. To be fair, the correct terminology is die by suicide, but okay. But apparently what? people can't say the, that anymore. How is that the correct? Because that's just what it is. You can't use the, the word is suicide. Yeah, but it's not commit suicide. It's die by suicide. No, it's not. That's so ridiculous. Okay. So com- you can't say the word commit anymore? You can't use the two words together. It's the act is not committing suicide. It's dying by suicide. I think it still like works. Yeah, it does. Like it's a verb. So I can't say I I'm going to go. I can't say I'm going to. I just committed a homicide. I don't know. So I got to say I got I killed by homicide. <laughs> I don't understand a whole lot of things, but hey, Cordy, good to see you. I'm just bringing in my professional terminology that like, that's the term that we have to use. Interesting. We can't, we can't say commit suicide. It's die by suicide. Do you remember the suicide girls? The suicide pack? No, the suicide girls. It was, uh, I think maybe it's still a thing, but this is like 15 years ago. They were all tatted up. It was like a a man, a men's magazine, kind of like. Oh, no. Um, FHM or something. No. That magazine for men. Nope. It has Never like heard the of them. chicks. Nope. No. Not uh, not a, an article that I would peruse. No. A- anyway, we, we had them pinned up like all over uh, in the army. I will say, though. They were called that, Suicide Girls. 
girls. That's what they were called. Huh. That um, it's a myth that if you talk about suicide, that it makes one more likely to go through with the act. Like you, that's why I don't understand why it's a it's a whole like don't talk about it because it, how do you it know it's a myth? It's one of the statistics that we learn. It's a myth. Like it doesn't mean that someone it, by talking about it doesn't mean that you know so and so that's listening to this episode because we're talking about suicide is going to go think that they are going to do that. Like I feel like if you're talking about it, you're already thinking about it. You know, like her this girl on Twitter, like she's already thinking about it. that's why she's talking about it. You know, right? No, I'm talking about like from a from a content creator standpoint. I think it depends on the content. Like if you're saying go do this, that's Her, one thing. Right. Or or in or, or things that are depressing. There was a case at, at, we we talked about it because it was on a um uh, it was a headline that we were talking about a couple months ago um about a parent who was suing like Pinterest and Twitter because their daughter was being shown images that were very depressing and encouraging of the act Mm -hmm. And she did commit suicide. Mm. She did die by suicide, whatever the, tr the right terminology is. No, I was, I was just so was I think it depends on the content, but it depends on what the person's, you know, state is. But if they're like, I think that's a problem with like what you people, you know, if you're searching for it or if you're in a state, you are constantly shown those images on social media and like, well, yeah, you're being fed the negative stuff that Correct. you're searching for. Correct. I don't <laughs> know. It's, it's a topic for another time, I guess. All right. I just thought it was interesting. The brother gets on Twitter goes through her direct messages, sees that she did find some guy to commit suicide with her. He's the one that suggested it. He suggested a pack. Yeah. So, and, addition, and additionally, the cops did look at the CCT video and they did see a young man walking back to his apartment, the one I just showed you, that apartment with Ico. So they do see them together. This man was also communicating with another girl in the same fashion. This girl had posted, I am depressed. I am looking to kill myself, but I don't want to do it alone. I know it sounds morbid, but it's a scary thing to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what suicide packs are. You know, you do it together. Like, let's do it together because mm -hmm. it's more comforting. So this man was also talking to another girl at the same time. However, she kind of got creeped out by this guy. So she broke communication. But the police saw an opening here. Hey, we need to go interview this guy. Why don't you message? him back, not Eichel, mm -hmm. I'm talking about this other girl who mm -hmm. was unnamed. Why don't you message him back and meet up at his apartment and then we'll go in right after. And that, that way we can kind of catch him by surprise. Mm. So she agreed to that. And that's how the police ended up at his apartment, room number 205. Mm. This is the man. Like the Mambo number five. Yes. exactly. It says right here, the Mambo number five. Wow. Can you tell me what uh, author that is? Lou Beta. Can you describe this man here? He actually looks a lot like Lou Beta. Not at all. Um, I okay. He looks like he's in his twenties. Yes, I'd say um, twenty four. I was gonna say twenty two. We'll, we'll see. Uh, very skinny, slender, uh, dark hair, Japanese young man. Looks like he has a nice view though in his apartment. Yeah, is that his apartment? You think? No, that's not the same apartment. This is like oh. some skyline. Oh, I want to ask. This is probably a stupid question. Japanese people only have dark hair, right? They don't. There's no blonde Japanese. Like naturally uh, blonde. I, uh, so they, I I have seen Japanese people with blonde hair, but yeah, I don't know if it's natural. Natural or They're if like, it's dyed. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be dyed. Yeah, I, I right? would imagine. Well, the, well, typically speaking, darker hair is a dominant trait. Right. So, I don't know. So, genetically speaking, I don't know. It's a good question. This man, his name is Takihiro Shirayashi. Wow. I said it perfectly. So, that's what you get. So, <laughs> nailed it. Not going back. Just keep going forward. He's not going to say it again. <laughs> The cops go to his apartment and they knock on the door. This woman is already in there. She got there a few minutes before. He walks to the door and he opens the door and it's the police. They knock on the door. This is a very mild-mannered young man. Mm. Can I help you? They ask about the girl and they can see her in there, the, the one that they sent for the sting. And then they asked about Aiko Tamora. Is this woman with you? And then the man says, yeah, she's in here. Great. Story's over, right? This woman who wanted to commit suicide a few days 
days ago had went to the suicide pack, but yet she's in the apartment. So it's fine. Everything is fine. But then this man points to a small cooler sitting in the apartment floor and the apartment is super small. Let me show you the apartment right quick. This is the studio apartment. So you see the loft, mm -hmm. which is super smart. We don't do that over here. So there are some lofts, but it's not super common. The bathroom, kitchen, super small studio. See, I don't think that I would like having to go down a ladder to get to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Wait, I can't, I don't think that's a real ladder. I mean, they had to have steps or something. Like that, they just put um, a ladder I mean, up there. sometimes it could just be, yeah, a lot. I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. I'd rather sleep up there. Anyway. I wouldn't mind sleeping up there, but I would want my bathroom to be up there. I don't want to have yeah. to go down a ladder to. But you just take a bottle. We used to take these oh, piss bottles and just. Good for you. Does not work that way. Police look into the apartment, little studio apartment. They don't see Iko anywhere. Is she in here with you? Yeah, she's in here. But then he points to a small cooler that's just sitting there on the floor, no. on the apartment floor. And then he says, quote, she's in the cooler. The cooler is the size of a cooler, a drink cooler. It is a two by two, two feet by two feet, if even that, that you store drinks in. So you're telling me that this Japanese girl who is kind of petite is in this cooler. Immediately, the cops, they drag the other girl out, you know, the, the one that went to meet him. And they immediately arrest this guy. And the cops know something's amiss because mm -hmm. guess what? You can smell it. They can smell it, especially the police. Not only that, but there have been constant complaints of the smell. This is in a studio apartment and there's a decomposing body in this apartment. People were complaining that maybe the sewage was leaking. Everyone that smells a dead body that has never smelled one before always has the same thought. You know, what is that? It's such a different smell to see your own species decompose. It's different than anything you've ever smelled. So you don't know exactly how to place it. If you go back to the Anthony Soul case, the Cleveland Strangler, he had all these dead women in his apartment that he was just storing and letting them rot there in his three-story house. They actually went to the next door sausage factory and fined them for having dirty pipes. And they had to, they spent like 30 grand on, on completely repiping everything. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And it was re in reality, just these dead bodies in this guy's house. So no one knows what the smell is, but they can smell it. So he's saying that this woman, Aiko, is in this cooler. Mm, don't like that. But then they see a few other things. It's not just the one cooler. Oh no, how many coolers are there? Hold on, let me say this first. The police could smell it. They arrest this man, Takahiro, and then they go and they open the cooler, which you never want to do. You never want to open the cooler. What's in the box? The cop opens the cooler and in the cooler, Aiko was there looking back <gasps> at the cop. It no. was it was just her head. Oh no. Her head packed in this cooler. Ugh. Eyes open, still looking at this, looking out. Oh, no, 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 no. On the floor next to her head in this cooler were seven more boxes. Now, this is a studio apartment. I showed you. Very small. There, there have been quite a few females that have went through this apartment. And eventually, they say, the cops ask, you know, how did you fit all these body parts in this apartment? Quote, I laid out the body bodies like Tetris. Mm. So I'm going to tell you how many bodies here in a second. It's not just the one. It's quite a few in this studio apartment, room 205, and which is now up for rent. I actually went to the the, the website because I typed in uh, apartments near uh, Com or what is it? Uh, Camp Zama. Z apartments near Zama is actually listed for rent. Super effing cheap. Wow. I think um, Nanomi said how much it was. I think it was like 1100 yen or whatever, which is like super cheap, apparently. Lauren said, yeah, it's less than like eighty dollars a month. Yeah, it was like, hold on, let me just, let me. That's show crazy. You. I mean, you, you guys are gonna be like, why didn't they tear it? You know, tear the room down or something? I mean, do, shit. Do you, I wonder if in Japan they have to disclose whether I would imagine or there eleven thousand yen a month, which is exceptionally cheap. And then she asked, would anyone dare to live there? Not me. If I was really. Um, struggling for money, I would, honestly. I don't know, man. Because in, in Japan, they have beliefs like spirits and th bad juju. Yeah. I mean, they made the best damn horror movies I mean, ever. I, I just, I wouldn't make it a long-term solution, but it could be a great way to temporarily save some money. Mm. Do it for like a year, get out, you know? How many bodies do you think? I wouldn't he, buy the place, but maybe rent. How many bodies do you think he cut up in that apartment? 24. That's what I was going to say. Why would you say 24? I don't know.
All right, we'll go over everything and exactly how he cut them up and how he got so many in the apartment. It was only a two month time span, but he went on a killing spree, this man right here. All right, but first I wanna get into, and this is really important, suicide in Japan is a- Very prominent, an epidemic. Yeah, it is an epidemic. They have one of the highest suicide rates in the world, especially for their smaller population. Is it is the rate higher than the United States? Oh yeah. Well, so yes and no. No, because- we have a lot more people. We have what? How many people we got? 300, 300 million, million? Some shit something like, that. like that. You know what I'm saying? But this will tell you. In 2021 alone, so two years ago, in that year alone, a recorded over 20,000 Japanese people committed suicide. 20,000 in just one year. Wow. That's... That is like a lot. Yeah. Right? I mean, holy shit. It's one of the highest in the world. We actually covered a case, the Hana Kimura case, the, the Japanese wrestler who was on that show. Mm -hmm. That's and right. And she was bullied. And she committed suicide. This is a very, you want a really interesting statistic? Yeah. I did just look this up. So suicide is one of the most important public health issues in both Japan and the United States. Mm -hmm. Suicide causes about 30,000 deaths annually in the two countries, respectively. Wow. So in 2000, it was the sixth leading cause of death in Japan and 11th in the United States. So in terms of like you, you were saying, kind of difference in number of people, um, the incidence rate is higher in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Can you read the like one? The per percentage was? Correct. So crazy. That stat first was 2,000? Uh, on the sixth uh, leading cause, yes. So why are we talking about this? Like, what, you know, what's the deal with the suicide thing? I'm telling you that this girl posted it. He said that he would do it with her. And not only this, he did this to many other girls who were also posting they want to kill themselves, but they want to do it with someone. So this is kind of a, it's a weird kind of, I don't know, phenomenon that it's, he's like, an opportunist killer, which we'll talk about. Yes. And he's he's kind of just hitting the trend, right? I mean, he's he's kind of killing because there's a market for it, literally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's literally people <laughs> saying that they want to die. I know. And so that's Nuts, an easy, right? you know, easy opportunity for a sick human being like him. Mm -hmm. I yeah, yeah. And I wonder, I guess we'll find out more if people are posting it. But what happens, especially with young people, um, you know, what if they post it but don't really mean it? Do, does he does he only get the chance to talk like people that are the people that back out? Oh, you said one girl backed out of it, but they still yeah, but a like lot a of people, sting operation. Yeah, thing. a lot of people back out of it, especially when they go to the house and see some boxes and smell some funny things. Right. From Japan today, historically, Japan has been described as having a tolerant attitude towards suicide as an act, which is, in the words of noted anthropologist Amiko Honuki Tierney, elevated to the level of an aesthetic experience. It has sometimes been considered a morally responsible decision. A tolerant attitude. Okay, think well, about... think kamikaze pilots and stuff like that in World War II, or they would rather um, yeah. commit suicide and by their own sword than be killed by the enemy. Mm -hmm. They believe it's noble to kill yourself rather than disrespect your family. Mm -hmm. And like the samurai, for instance, they call that the seppuku, and that's when you take the your own blade and you cut, you actually are cutting your aorta, slicing it through your stomach, and and, and then you, you kind of scramble your guts. But that actually, for them, is morally responsible. That's what they're supposed to do on the battlefield so they don't get caught and questioned and disgrace their country. When they do that, when a samurai stabs himself and kills himself, his spirit leaves his body and continues fighting on the battlefield. So, like, you ingrain that culture into, a you know, a people. I mean, suicide, I mean, they have their own forest, a suicide yeah. forest. Like, suicide is just tolerant over there. That's it's so much different over here, which is kind of scary, right? I mean... Yeah, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. I it's mean, like he said, sad. elevated to the level of an aesthetic experience. It's almost like noble to do. It's like, I don't yeah, know, like, crazy. Like Nicole said, like when you think about the kamikazes, like I, if I was someone's family member, I guess in America, it's like, oh my gosh, you're going out on a death mission that like you're literally not going to come back. But I guess maybe in that culture, and obviously this is me just speculating, but it would be like, you are, you know... You're fighting for your country. You better not come back. Back type thing. Yeah, kind of like not just you better not come back, but 
there is no greater honor than to sacrifice your life mm. for your country. No, no, no. It's you better not come back. And, and I like Jen's way of putting it. I know, it, but in, in World War II, the the mother, all the Japanese, the infantry had a dagger with them. The mother, their mother, before they're shipped out to war, will give them this dagger and says, if you get caught, use this to kill yourself. Right. It yeah. was not that you yeah. don't come back, but right. if you get, like, I know. that's the better alternative but, but, than being captured as a POW or what have you. Before the bomb, if a, if the Japanese were to come back home before the bomb, okay, the bomb changed everything. If they were to come back home, guess what? That means they won the war. Does that make sense? They were going to keep fighting until they, until won. they won the war. So if they come back home to see mama, guess what? The war's won and they won it. If not, they're either going to keep fighting and die there or they're going to kill themselves on the battlefield. Because they lost. Which is super fucking crazy, right? I mean, I, damn, that's, that is fucking dedication, dude. Yeah. I, I don't have that much dedication for my country. I'll tell you that right now. In fact, at one point, I was ready to change over countries for the highest one paying me. I was going to join the Australian army because they were going to pay they me seem more. cool. <laughs> You know, at least to speak English, you would have you would have at least been able to follow their instructions. You would have had to eat a lot of Vegemite, though. Yeah. So, just a little bit more about the suicide because it is super important, and that's this guy's mo. In 1997, it spiked up 35 percent overnight, and this was because the they had an economic banking crisis. Literally, that that uh, foretold our banking crisis. They all their banks crashed. Mm. Anyway, most what are their banks looking like now? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Ours are in an interesting state at the moment, yeah. but, you oh, know. Someone at brunch today had a Silicon Valley bank shirt. Did you see it? Yeah. No. I was like, I wanted to be like, dude, like, I'll buy that shit from you. Anyway. No. <laughs> most. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Why? I want that. Most suicides in Japan are from males. 70% most unemployed and most teens. A large percentage of the suicides are the result of bullying. Mm. But did you know that with suicide that there is a higher percent, the reason reason that there's a higher percentage of male deaths than female deaths. Why? Because men are more likely to use a um, a, a method that is um, more that can get the job done. immediate. Mm -hmm. Like they'll they'll use a gun or a knife or something like that. Where women are more likely um, to ingest pills or over OD or something like that. Um, so while there is a higher completion rate with males, there is a higher attempt rate in females. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. The more that we've talked about this sort of thing, it's awful. Um, and honestly, like to me, there's nothing that, I mean, it, it, the whole bullying aspect and what people have to go through today, it, it, like I think being, growing up in today's society is like, I, I, how do you navigate that between social media, all of the images that are, are surrounding you and everyone's got a cell phone and everything is uploaded instantly and everybody knows everything about you. Ah. Oh yeah, I was telling her about that. There's this uh, Kentucky girl. There was this viral video that went, she was from University of Kentucky and she got banned obviously but she had a fight she was super wasted like extremely wasted and this is like on the internet but she got in a fight with one of the floor mates I guess or someone who also mm -hmm. was in college but lived on the same floor yep. who was African American so she said the n-word like 200 times Damn. and they recorded it and like overnight like she I mean she, obviously she got like caught assault charges because she was like hitting and stuff but you know what I'm saying holy shit life, life over <laughs> like, like, yeah life yeah. over for That's real. It. I mean, That's holy it. shit. Even her parents got, got, um, cause her mom posted a, a, a petition mm -hmm. thing that said, you know, don't let my daughter's life be over. Let her go back to college. Aww. You know, but I mean, people are just, they were grilling the mother because in the thing, she said, don't let this one word ruin my daughter's life. So people were like underline that. I mean, holy oh, shit, dude. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of bad. But then again, she was so fucking wasted. Yeah. Uh, she couldn't even, she obviously didn't remember anything. Still, it's not, it, it, yeah, but it's but like, it it's not her, like man. the person's, it's, they said it once, they said one word 200 times. Yeah. It's not like, the, uh, it, you know what I mean? It, it's like a, uh, yeah. there was intent there, even despite it her just state. Sucks. I don't know. Like, I, know, I don't know. I know, just in general, like, there's, it's a hard, this is not an easy time to be living. Mm -hmm. I, I would I, just, oh, no, and with the whole, obviously, like, that's a different situation than just being, like, being yourself and being a kid. I remember talking with um a colleague who's, um, daughter was being very severely bullied um, locally here and try, had to like try to get them out of a different school. Like no reason, no, re no reason, uh, just craziness. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let me read this. 
One student, anti-bullying advocate who formerly considered suicide, told CNN, quote, the long break from school enables you to stay home, so it's heaven for those who are bullied. When summer ends, you have to go back. And once you start worrying about getting bullied, committing suicide might be possible. The reason we're talking about this is because all the victims tonight, and I'm just going to tell you, there are nine <gasps> victims, and they were all in that apartment. There were 240 bones Oof. they found in that studio apartment. All nine victims- that add up 240 bones. I don't know, Jen. How many bones are in a human body? 206. I, well, I don't know, Jen. Maybe he, I don't know. Maybe he just kept some of them and not all of them. Maybe some people don't have all 206 bones. <laughs> I think there's a problem if that's the case, but. Anyway, so all nine, all nine people, eight females and one male were in that studio apartment. Every one of them were posting about suicide. So this guy is very opportunist with it. I'm, we're going to get more into the actual crime here in a second, but that's what the victims are. Are. And in like Aiko Tamora's case, her Twitter page said, quote, I want to die, but doing so alone is terrible. I'm looking for someone to die with. Now we have a new phenomenon, the internet, right? So everyone's connected like you were just talking about. So if you don't want to commit suicide alone, you can easily reach out and find someone to do it with you instantly. So this is kind of a unique killer. I don't think we have anyone over here like that who, who has got caught at least for doing that. I mean, we had that one girl that talked that guy into killing himself. Mm. Uh, what was her name? I live you now die type of oh, shit. Oh, Conrad Roy and yeah. Michelle Carter. Yeah, but no one has, I don't think any killer has browsed the suicide pages and stuff like that and actually seeking prey. Seeking prey. It's mm. kind of a weird, you know, weird thing, man. I don't know. It's just so it's creepy in its own way, honestly. Yeah. These are the victims right here. I can't pronounce all these names, but here's the one male right here. Mm. Yeah, and then this is him. This is the killer. So that's who we're talking about tonight. He is called the Twitter killer mm. because he used Twitter. And like I said, Twitter is what the Japanese people use more over there. Three of the victims were high school students. This is from News on Japan. Quote, according to information provided by investigators, there were three female high school students. So a 15-year-old, a 17 year old and another 17 year old. So three high school students in high school that he he got, you know, just browsing Twitter. He would look for keywords, hashtags. If you say, I don't know, unalive or something, mm -hmm. he'll and he'll pick that up, you know, and then message you privately. Let's talk about this dude real quick, just real quick. He was born in 1990, supermarket bagger in high school. He was really nondescript. No one knew when his classmates found out it was him. They they couldn't even recall him. He was just kind of there. He was the gray man, right? I did see he worked in a pachinko parlor, which that's a big thing over there, but nothing major. A lot of the people in the neighborhood remembered him as a, quote, quiet child who was able to socialize with neighbors. Quote, didn't especially stand out, but was not a gloomy character either. He was also a really good listener, which is kind of screwed up in his own way because our people that depressed talk about their problems and he was a good listener. So that's how he kind of connected initially. I know it's a little weird. We're going to talk about him cutting up the bodies here in a little bit because what's his motive? Okay, there's got to be a motive. What is it? Is it material I mean, gain? I mean, he's is he killing just because he likes to kill? I think so. Yeah. Wait, how does this Maybe start? he feels like he's helping them out. Well, so that is is what he said. Ah. What he said, obviously, kind of a... Uh, like a mercy killing? Uh, Kevorkian type of guy. One person claiming to be a former schoolmate took to Twitter saying Shirashi was so normal, inconspicuous, and low profile that most classmates would not even recognize him when reports of his alleged crimes are flashed in the news. Hmm. I did see in elementary school he would do the choking game for fun. Oh. I you know now I think about it when I was going through basic training there was a a guy a guy he was a good friend I mean he was a cool dude but he liked to get choked sexually no not sexually but like I, I say, how would you know that because he would like he would lean up against a wall and someone would choke him out and I remember I did it too because he was like yo check this out it's fun you know and I just leaned up on the wall and someone would choke you out and then you pass out and it's almost like a, a high it, it kind of felt like I was high for a minute the fuck I know it's weird and now that I think about it, this is probably some fucking weird fetish this he dude has. He probably also had it sexually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, am, he, I hate to break it to you. Yeah, he was probably... But he was maybe a little turned on. And now, now that I really think about it, I kind of wonder how long I was out for. Was this during the uh, <laughs> Don't Ask, Don't Tell era of the military? <laughs> uh. a one woman claimed that she was in a relationship with Shiryashi in 2016, claimed that he was a, quote, gentle character who was never angry with women. So he 
he's he's a very mild mannered kid. So they say. Who likes to murder and, people? And maybe it's not. All right. So it is his fault. Maybe. But think about it. All the murders that we're talking about happen within a two month period, a less than two month period, a month and a half, nine murders. You know, so it's like and this guy wasn't going to stop. He has a studio apartment and they found so, nine severed, decapitated, cut up bodies now, in his apartment. Well, here's a Did question. Did he have a plan for the things in the cooler? No, that's what I'm saying. He's I'm just gonna wondering. Keep going. So he admitted to actually killing these people. It wasn't that he let them die by suicide and then dismember the that bodies. That is interesting. Like, so, so he's a so. Would that make him a good guy? No, 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 because no, he's still dismembering a corpse. That's still not cool. Yeah, so he's he's not and letting them allowing, kill themselves and allowing and them something. to kill themselves is also not cool. I know, but would would the public view him a different way if they came over? He was performing a service. Okay, you can kill yourself here, and then. And he would cut the bodies up to get rid of them. Well, I think no. it's it, it is it's a difference in the charge, certainly, in if he was the one that actually did the killing or if he was a witness and like kind of like lured them in a, to observe. Especially if like even with a different view on suicide and different culture, wouldn't the family want the body back? So even if he was just letting them kill themselves there. So they ain't getting that body back. It's in many pieces. I I know, but like instead of like being like, hey, like here's your daughter. He's dismembering the body and ridding it. And like the family is just assuming this person is missing and dead, which the person is dead. But do you see what I'm saying? Like it's still not not cool, like not good, not not good at all. When that woman who dated him that I just talked about broke up with him, she said, quote, when I told him that I wanted to break up, he hugged me and said something like, don't go. So very mild mannered, very mild manner. His his parents were divorced, no bullying. He was shy. He did make friends and he played soccer. He was a normal kid. However, as he progressed through high school, he stopped wanting to go out. He stopped wanting to participate in sports. He has this other thing that's a phenomenon in Japan where the, the hermit lifestyle, which is another huge thing. It's like these, the Japanese people specifically, maybe Chinese too. I, now I'm not trying to be racist, but a lot of these people, they they lose the will to, to do anything. So they become hermits in their own in their own apartment. They never leave their apartment. Like he started doing that in high school, right? Isn't that weird? Have you seen those documentaries where these hermits will sit in their apartment for 10 years and never even step outside? Mm -hmm. They it's get called agoraphobia. Yeah, no, no, it's something different in Japan, I'm telling you. It's not the fear Typical, of well, uh, not it's the, not the it's fear not of leaving your house. It's they something just don't want to leave their house. Yeah, it's something like that. I don't know the psychology, but what about their groceries? He well, I said, guess you can get them delivered now. Yeah, especially in Japan, everything's like metropolis, you know. Quote I don't want to go to school anymore. I don't want to go along with all these strong-willed people. So he started shutting himself down in his room. And he did this. He was 26 when he got caught. He did this the months leading up to shut himself down in his room. October 2015, he was working as a sex scout to the for the red light districts in Japan. Which I didn't know they had, but they have brothels in Japan. And he was actually working in Kuba, Kuba Kiko. That is a sex scout? Interesting. I did not know that that was a thing. Like, does is he? I'm confused. Is he scouting and like doing talent? quality control? Is he scouting to talent? Be like, yeah, who is? I'm assuming talent. Is, is he getting? I was he, approached once at a uh, no way by a pimp. At, no, it was at the King of Prussia Mall in Pennsylvania because my sister and brother in law went to Villanova, and I was out shopping with my sister, and we were both approached by a woman who um, gave us a business card and it asked wasn't us to, Epstein's. Uh... I don't believe so. This was. <laughs> this would have been, um, gosh, I was still in high school. So it would have been 09, I guess. I was probably a senior. Um, and approached us about doing adult films. Interesting. That's like my sister. That was probably Epstein's uh, wife. A couple of weeks ago. I don't know. Pennsylvania? Uh, like, crabs not. A couple of weeks ago, my sister was out with some friends. And one of her friends um, met this girl. And this girl, like, was, she was, like, Russian or something. And she gave my sister a card. It had a barcode on it. She goes, oh, oh very cool. Like. Like, what is this? Does it scan? And the woman goes, no, it's for fashion. And like walked away and that was it. Like, Dude, 
tell and your so sister, I'm man, sure to stay away from fashion. That. Tell but- her, tell her, stay away from that shit because that is probably a sex slave. That you know that shit is super not yeah, talked about, but it goes getting, on a lot, dude. You, you know, you need to watch those videos about things that they'll do to your cars. Like they, like if you see like a random dot on your back it's window. Fine. I would live in um, South Carolina. It happens in South Carolina. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. I know. There, it's, a, like it's, it's a, a it's a, it is a big uh, upcoming epidemic. It's, it's going to be a big problem, even bigger than it already is. You know, what was interesting. So when I went to visit my sister a couple of weeks ago at the airports, they had like poster, big poster signs about like being aware of human trafficking yeah. in the airport. Yeah, dude. And I was like, is this the thing I need to be worried yes. about in an airport? Yes. And they, I saw this video, like I just said, like they all like put like little um, marks on your window, like with paint pens. And then I was, I was literally walking to my car the other day and I saw one of those marks. I was like, is someone trying to traffic me? It was very frightening, but like they'll put, like they'll put um, like cash on your windshield. And so like, you're like, oh, someone left cash on my windshield. When you go to grab it, um, they'll come around the car and grab you. So like, don't take the money, just like try to get in your car and run or don't get in your car, call the police. They'll like zip tie your handles um they'll put something like a bag or purse or something underneath your wheel so that you like have to bend over and the uh, or and they try to get under your car and they grab you from there it's like very scary like oh my god i want to wear a wig and go out to the airports where this is happening bend over and try to try to get trafficked and see what yeah. happens and and like then you can go fight all the yeah. people ah. like people go. people will follow you around in grocery stores and retail settings and like you like it's it's scary like people People have posted, um, even in my hometown back home. Can I like, have one of those wicked weeds? Wicked hazy? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. No, don't Go be ahead. sorry. Um, about like noticing that people are following them around or seeing people watch them in stores. And it's just like very creepy. It is very creepy. Are you not into the lo-fi anymore? I forgot I had it. I, I feel like I just stole yours. So I was giving you that. <sighs> you don't feel like anything. Well, let me- I've, I've been drinking this. I'm fine. Oh. I'm trying not to get... I mean, after last week, after we did, told- you literally drank a mason jar full of shots. No, so no, that, I'm whatever you're too. gonna say, We're like both, no, after last week when we <laughs> collectively drank that entire bottle of margarita. Wait, collectively, Jen? Oh my god, you were so effing effing I wasted. Was, I was wasted on the episode. I remember saying um something. I don't then, remember much of what happened. And last then week. you were like, like, and then you were like, uh, because he hit him in the fucking face or something. No, I don't know. It no, was so- it did not. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, I don't believe. <laughs> Yeah, that. dude. Someone pull it up, man. Pull it up from the last I, episode. Shram did dude. say something about us being like all. What she say? We were all in a great space. Last no, we week. weren't. You know, I fucking hate those episodes because it takes so long to edit. I mean, man. all you needed to do was just cut the first hour of episode two, and there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let me get on with this. October 2015, he was a sex scout for brothels, which was a legal job. However, what he was doing was illegal, and he was working for different parlors. However, he was arrested for his role in this sex scout because he would actually recruit women to work in a sex shop knowing, full knowing that those women that he introduced would be forced into prostitution. And he knew about it. He was arrested 2017 for violating the Employment Security Act. Several people tweeted about a, quote, creepy scout with one person apparently employed in the same business as a suspect posting a photo of him with the caption, quote, watch out for this scout. All right. So what do you guys think of this guy? Kind of piece of shit, right? Uh, sleazy. 2017, after his court, all that stuff, he, he spent probation time and stuff like that. He returns to his parents' home, starts living with his father. However, that didn't go very well. At this point, Shiryashi starts pretending he wants to commit suicide. He is doing this to get money from his father, to get pity from his father, things like that. Can you read the one I pretended to be depressed? Don't worry, we're going to get to more of the how we cut out the body. I know what people want. Also, just want to love how you're re... Um, re um, what am I saying? Like, re... I don't know, you're drones. I'm not drones, but you were like, your re- react- react- re- re- reenactment of me was like Dan or Kyle's voice from South Park. Or was it yeah. when it, You just yeah, said, yeah, you're yeah. like, yeah, just hit him in the face. <laughs> That's what you just said. And I was like, South Park? Also, Shram said, are y'all going to stay conscious today? That's what she said earlier that I was talking about. Sorry, okay, and I said, on. maybe. That's kind of fucked up. I just said maybe. To be fair, I definitely wasn't probably not conscious by the end of it. I 
don't remember much except fighting with my sister on the way back. Oh, no, you fought here too at the house. I pretended to be depressed. More specifically, I said things like I want to die and I don't have the confidence to work. I put it on the bed and slept on it and I hung the rope from the strap of the balcony and pretended to hang myself. My father found out about this and worried me. I tried to hang myself in the park. I tried to hang myself from a height of 20 meters. Mm. I've even been to the bridge. Mm. So he did have some suicidal tendencies, but he was doing it more from what I found to get like pity. Mm. He did run away from home three times in high school and he told his parents that he joined a group of suicide briquettes. I don't know what the fuck that is. In March 2015, he opened a Twitter account and started interacting with women with suicidal thoughts. This is what makes him unique from any other killer. At this time, he posted false tweets as if he had suicidal thoughts and he would say, let's commit suicide together. This is his Twitter page. That's his Twitter page. Look at the handle. Hanging Pro. Hanging Pro. Jen, look at this photograph. Oh. It's Hanging Pro, Jen. Don't like that. Oh. I don't like that. I thought either. you would like that. Well, Shit. Why, is, no. why is his Twitter handle in English, but everything else is in Japanese lettering? I don't know. I don't know, but this is the profile picture. You see the guy has a uh, rope burns and oh gosh don't like that slash, slash marks and stuff oh, oh that's very uh, morbid. So he was the hanging pro and his shtick to get these women over was, hey, I can teach you how to hang yourself because I'm I'm an expert in that. He advertised himself as a, quote, professional hangman. And he invited them to his apartment where he had several nooses set up to show them how they would do it. Like tie the noose like this when you go into the park or whatever, and then make sure that it's of good length. A lot of, because you want to break the, the hyoid bone, you don't want to be strangled you want it to be instant death oh it's not it's not like a car showroom where you're like this is this model where you do this and that like that's not that's not cool well apparently there are some there are like websites and stuff dedicated to showing you how to kill yourself from the mirror his account is believed to have had a profile saying he wanted to quote spread my knowledge of hanging and be a help to those who are really in pain the 27 year old is also believed to have posted a tweet in October suggesting people who are suicidal shouldn't tell their friends and loved ones about their thoughts. He deleted some messages such as, quote, unless you make a mistake in tying the rope around your neck, you will not fail in your suicide attempt. One woman had posted, quote, I am gathering people who will die with me. And he sees that and that's how he DMs her on Twitter. This is, I know this is in Japanese, but this is uh, just one more thing about the Twitter. So this is why he's called the Twitter killer, right? You know, I think the name's kind of, I guess so. But anyway, what I just showed you, that's says the following, quote, people are bullied all the time at school and work. And when you can't handle the place you go to every day and the people that'll push you further and further mentally, I think lots of people are suffering and, t- and attempting suicide, even if the news isn't covering it. I want to help these people. You probably have a good idea of what help means. Now, it's crazy. I don't know if you know this, Nanomi, but this isn't the first man who's done this. I didn't go in this case, but mm. there was someone right before this guy named Hiroyoshi Mayu who actually killed three individuals, even one 14-year-old girl that he met on a suicide website, like one of those backdoor websites. So it's not the first killer in Japan that has lured people committing suicide for their own own pleasure or whatever. I do feel like that that's probably, you know, I'm sure it happens more often than we think because it is a ripe opportunity. Mm. Um, yeah. If someone like is is a sick individual looking for, for yeah, people who he, are kind of like willing, if yeah. that makes sense. He just found a market that wasn't exploited yet. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's uh, almost, almost for my... I mean, we have like a want... Well, you remember the, like the want ad killer and, you know, yeah, even yeah, we have like yeah. Tinder killers and shit like yeah. that. Like they're just finding a way to funnel in victims. Yeah. Like that's what he's doing. And, and this is a, a, a different way Way because they're actually they want to die up for the end result. It's um it's almost nuts. reminiscent of the guy that wanted to be eaten. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree. Yes. Yeah. Or mine. Or oh whatever. man, that was D- that disturbing. That was a case. Didn't we make wiener schnitzel that night? We did. The wiener schnitzel was good. I put yeah. the I put the pieces of meat in a ziploc bag and 
to wrap them in a newspaper. Even while we were dismantling, I was exchanging messages with other people through Twitter, DMs, etc. On the other hand, while interacting, I was looking for someone I could get money from, or if not, I could rape and kill. I had time to sleep. Message, message exchange was different from physical labor, just laying on the futon and using my phone. It felt like I was half asleep. So he was doing this. He, and this is how he cuts up the body. He tells police that the first one took him three days to dismember a human body. Quote from the second person, I was able to do it within a day. So he got better at it real quick. When he was dissecting a corpse, he would say, quote, if the blood is removed, there is almost no blood when the meat is cut. It's a completely different mental state than cutting meat or cutting fish. If you don't do it, you'll get caught. He's talking about draining the blood. So he would kill the individual and then drain the blood. That's the first thing he does before cutting off the head. I also thought that if I could work more efficiently if I did this. On top of that, the head of the deceased was placed in a cooler box containing cat litter, So, in, which didn't work, but he would put cat litter over the, the heads. He says that when he was dissecting each each of these nine women, one, one male, eight females, quote, eight big bones came out per person. Eight large bones come out per person. Both sides are boiled. So it is boiled 16 times. It oh. took two to three hours. So I think it was 10 minutes each time. After that, I put it in the refrigerator to dry. And I think it took about 30 minutes at the longest. I put the pieces of meat in a Ziploc bag and wrapped them in newspaper. Sometimes there was one Ziploc in newspaper, sometimes two. I cut it into four pieces and put them in a garbage bag. It is a large bag of 40 liters to 50 liters. I couldn't throw it all away at once, so I threw it away two or three times a day. I thought that if I could throw it away in the morning when people were going to work or school, they wouldn't be suspicious. I threw it away when other residents had thrown it away and it was full of garbage and smelled anyway. Now, I want to tell you something that I found that no one else has found in anywhere in the media. I, I have not seen this and we've covered so many of these cases. Like the guy is not just inviting these women over to, to kill, right? I mean, that's stupid. Who does that? He says money's the motivator, but the real reason is sex. He has sexual desires and he can rape these women. However, it's kind of weird when you think about it because the first thing he does when this female gets into the house, the first thing he does is kill them. That's the first thing. He doesn't rape them while they're alive. And that's something I haven't seen talked about. However, he does mention it in this quote. Can you um read the one eight hours a day? Did you know there's 10 types of uh, uh, necrophiles. <laughs> Isn't one enough to like just cover all the deeds? No, there's 10, man. And Do you want to tell, tell us all 10? I mean, if you want, you read this first. Yeah, I want to know all 10. Eight hours a day working part-time in the refrigerator wasn't physically demanding, but it was troublesome. Killing and dismantling was a burden, but the pleasure in return of the forced intercourse after death outweighed it. So you see there. Oh, no. <laughs> That's no one, no one's talking about that. This is this guy's M.O., man. And he says it right there. Just no one picked up on it. None of the newspapers picked up on it. He says that he kills these women as soon as he gets there. He is a slender man. He's small. He's in a studio apartment. He cannot afford the woman screaming. Right. So no matter what, he is killing these women right when they get there. Right there. When they get there, he does talk about drugging the victims. Maybe, you know, you want a glass of water or something. Either way, he gets them out the way quick, suffocates them to death so they can't scream. Scream. And then, then he has sex with the corpse, okay? Because he says it was troublesome eight hours a day to cut these women up, but killing and dismantling was a burden, but the pleasure in return of forced in intercourse after death outweighed it. So this dude takes it up to a whole nother level. He's having sex with these dead corpses. Then he's cutting them up. That's the motive. He says the motive was financial. You're inviting a 14-year-old girl to your house. What financial shit are you going to get? They don't have money. They don't have money. I don't know why people are buying that from him. The motive is sex with the dead corpse. That is the effing motive man. He's not doing it for money. He says he was, but I'm telling you that's just a... And no one picked up on that, man. No one picked up on that. You don't invite a 14-year-old girl to rob her because she ain't got any fucking money, especially if she's about to kill herself. Yeah. Why would she have any money? She'd spend right. all of it. He's doing it to have sex with these women. He's doing it, and that's the only reason he's doing it. End of fucking story. Yes, he does rob them if they got money, but dude, 
the, the whole purpose of this guy is to find a victim who wants to kill themselves anyway, come over to the house, snuff them out quick, suffocation, hands around the throat, they can't scream, studio apartment, and then he has sex with the corpse and then he cuts them up. End of story. That's his motive, man. And no one picked up on that. You won't find that shit anywhere in the news. But yet he says it right there. He says the pleasure was worth it. The forced intercourse after death outweighed everything. No one's talking about that shit besides me because I pick up on that necro shit quick. Right. <laughs> Lovely. Shit. Thank you for that. All right. Sorry. Okay. I just kind of, uh, I got too excited there. I think let's talk about inside the apartment, a grotesque, grotesque scene of at least 240 bones. He just moved to that apartment in August, late August the 22nd. When did he get arrested? On Halloween day. So August 22nd to Halloween day is his killing spree. That's like, He's, that's a lot. That's working pretty, uh, that's a one a week. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause there's no, as a serial killer, there's, no like remorse period or whatever. He's basically a spree killer. Mm. I would call him a spree killer because he was going to keep doing it until he got caught. And he was literally just piling up corpses in his freaking studio apartment, which is crazy, right? Nuts, man. All right. This is uh, from Huffington Post. You want to read the headline? Oh, post. Nine human heads and 240 pieces of bone found in serial killer home. So they found nine heads in total. Most of them co covered with cat litter. Some of the human heads, a lot of the, quote, flesh was scraped off. Because what he would do is he'd boil them. And, you know, if you boil something, like, let's say you boil a chicken, you got to still scrape all the flesh off, right? Yeah. So if you boil a head, it's not just like the flesh is going to dissolve. Like you boil the head and then you still got to scrape it off with a knife, maybe like like a butter knife or something. Yeah, unless you're boiling it for gonna a really vomit. Long time. Like I don't want to think about it. But you that. still gotta pull it off. If it's been boiling for a long time. It's not just gonna fall off. Like I said, but a long time. Like hours. I put it in the slow cooker. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that story? Nuts, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of victims narrowly escaped death. Narrowly escaped. Uh one of them said, quote, he was sitting in front of his door looking at his cell phone. Quote, it felt creepy. A lot of people went over there, they noticed that odd smell, they saw the boxes, and then they just bolted. Yeah. So. Well, hopefully it, that saved their lives. This guy really has no remorse either. So the the uh, prosecutor said, quote, did you try to understand the feelings of the bereaved family? And then he responded, I wanted to eat snacks sold in the detention center. He was asking why he went for an interview because he, he said, why are snacks. you why are you getting interviewed, you know, from prison in this detention center? Be do, 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 is, do you want to understand the feelings of this bereaved family? No, I just wanted to eat snacks. Quote, to be honest, I was only thinking about my own gains and losses. Mm. No other persons. While listening to their worries, I was only thinking, do you have money or do you like me? There is <laughs> there is absolutely no attempt to fulfill the wish of wanting to die. Mm. So he's known as a Twitter killer. Kind of an interesting uh, take because of his method of finding victims, you know, yeah. which was also done before him a few years before by another man who only killed three. But it's definitely something you don't see over here. I don't think. I mean, I mean, we had like the Craigslist killer. I mean, I think there's a method. Yeah, but you they're, know, they're, it's a, they're finding killer. They're finding victims that want to kill themselves. Right. Like that's. I mean, I think that sort of thing would probably be like identified and shut down really quickly here. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Depending on the platform. Like if yeah. it's on the dark web, then that's going to yeah, be allowed. Yeah. But if it's on the regular website in like a Reddit forum or Twitter, someone somewhere here, it probably would be shut down right yeah. away. Yeah. So that was a uh, that was that one. Takira Shirayashi. Wow, that's a crazy case. But, Did you yeah. say what his sentencing was? Oh, he got sentenced to death. He's on death oh, row. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah, oh. with the other guy. He's I can't on believe death that row. I said that. I don't think She's I've ever said that before. Good. Wow. Good for you, Jen. I don't know. I have to reevaluate myself. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't believe none of the news picked up on that, what he really wanted to do. They were just bought that he just wanted the money. I mean, come on, man. Think about it for fucking a second. These women didn't have any fucking money. No, of course that's not the motive. The motive he's was he wanted to think. fucking have yeah. He's thinking what is. Are you going to go into the 10 types of necrophiliacs? I don't think you guys are ready for that. I'll do it on the next How, episode. Okay. Save that for the Supremos part two. And if you want to hear it live, then join our Patreon. Yeah. Because I've been like really into necrophiliacs or necrophilia. Oh, um, Speaking of necrophilia, um, and the only reason I thought I'm making this transition is because I think the, na the name sounds similar. 
Um, did you know that they're making a, a new Nosferatu movie? No. What do you mean? The original Dracula movie? That's what that is. Yeah, but they're making a new one. Like Bill Scholar, Scar, Bill Skarsgård is going to be It's going to be oh, interesting. It's going to suck just like all the Draculas they try to make. Well, I'm just None of them goes off the book. They're not scary. Well, I'm just letting you know because I thought you liked that movie, so I'm telling you. I don't think I've ever seen Nosferatu. I have not. It's supposed to be really scary. <laughs> well, already we're starting the list of movies to watch beginning October 1st. We were pretty close last year too. I mean, we one do, night. Yeah, I think there was maybe 5 days in the month that we yeah. missed. We watched these PG movies for her. If you want to watch a real movie, The Last House on the Left, we haven't watched that. Okay, we can watch These it. movies that are done by like Roman you Polanski. Know what? I'm just going to say whatever you want to watch this year, <laughs> minus I it. I will watch minus it. Well, then it's not whatever I want to watch then. It's fine. Whatever you want to watch. It, it, I it, what I, no no limits, no bounds. I will watch whatever you want to watch. It's just the month of October. This is October 1st. I can watch shit when I want to watch shit. Okay, what are you fine. talking about? All right, fine. We don't have to watch it together. Fuck you. Fuck you. This sounds like the conversation I had with my sister last week. No, it was worse than that. Was it really? Yeah. Oh. Don't remember. I only remember telling her to go fuck herself. No. I mean, you said... Um, no, he isn't. Don't worry, Juliet. I, I, I know I ate three pieces of pizza, but I threw them all up. So I did say that, actually. I remember that. I said that. Because she told me actually. I had seven pieces of pizza and I did it. Oh, this is live on YouTube. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> she's watching at the beach right now. No, she's not. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. This Talk Murder Me. We'll be back in 10 minutes. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. 